Good morning, everyone. It's Lori Staley, Addicted Stamper with Stampin' Up, and it is Thursday morning at 10 a.m., so it is time for coffee and cards. If you are joining me, give me a shout out, a like or a love, let me know you're here. I'm going to share this over on the VIP page. So no technical issues this morning, but it could be a little challenging because I just, hi, Emmy. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. Hey, Jerry. I just got home from the retina specialist and they dilated my eyes. <laughs> So this can be really interesting <laughs> today. Oh, thank you for sharing, ladies. I appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to give everybody a beat or two to hop on, and we'll get started. Good morning, Sharon. So, yeah, if I'm a little crooked and all that today, we'll know why, right? <laughs> because she can't really see very clearly. I did switch out my newer glasses for my older ones because it's I'm getting a lot of pauses this morning. I hope this goes okay. Good morning, Corinne. Thank you. Thank you guys for sharing. I appreciate it. I uh, definitely can't see with nothing on and my new glasses or contacts are too strong to see close up, so. <laughs> It should be fun, but we'll be good. We'll be good. All right, I see some of you hopping on. That's awesome. So if you are on my, what is happening? Oh, so we have a call into Comcast and they're supposed to be here, but unfortunately not until tomorrow afternoon because we've been having all kinds of problems. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, good morning. So if you're on my mailing list, you should have received, or my emailing list, I should say, you should have received an email in your inbox this morning talking about my BOGO sale. And I have my BOGO sale scheduled to start next Friday, October 24th at 6 p.m. Um, it is gonna be a whole lot of fun. If you don't know what a BOGO sale is, it means buy one, get one free, right? So I have over nine boxes and I'm continuing to pull stuff and add to it of retired product that I'm going to put up for you to shop. And when you're done shopping the retired product, you will send me your email me your list of things that you would like for my retired product. And then I will give you a total. First, I have to confirm that everything is still available, that you were the first person to comment sold on the item, et cetera. And then I will send you a total that you get to then go spend in my shop online. Um, and then I will ship you the retired product for free once that order is entered. You are responsible for the postage on the retired product and I will invoice you for that. Um, but it's you buy it in the shop and then you get all the retired product that you selected for free. And there's gonna be more coming out about that. Um, so watch your inbox. I'm going to have another um, email coming out on probably Sunday, Saturday or Sunday with a few more details in there. And uh, I'm also going to do a live right here on my Facebook page on Thursday night, probably around 730 to answer any questions, go over the rules one last time before the sale kicks off Friday night and answer any questions you may have. So as you read them through the material that comes out over the weekend, um, shoot me an email with your questions. So I'm sure to address those very specifically in that live. Um, and then, as I said, the sale will kick off on Friday. This is the group. There will be a special group and this is it. Lori Dash Addicted Stamper BOGO Sale 2021. This is my first virtual BOGO sale. I've always done them in person. So I'm a little nervous. You know, I'm, I'm human and I'm hoping to do it as, as cleanly and, and per, uh, 
perfectly as I possibly can, but you know, I'm human. I got two helpers coming in to help me out. So that'll be great. And uh, yeah, so make sure you join, go over and join. Um, right now you can't comment. I have comments turned off until the sale goes live on the 6th. But as the posts go up, you can certainly window shop and start making your list so you know what you wanna hit right away. Um, so make sure you join that. There'll be a special hostess code for your online orders. It won't be the monthly code that you see here. It'll be a special code specific for that event. Okay? And as I said, watch your email. There'll be more coming out. So guys, am I breaking up for you? Because I keep getting a screen flash that says waiting for the live, waiting for the live. Am I clean or am I breaking up? I'm going to lay that right there. <clears throat> and I will put this in the description of this video when we're done too, um, so that you can just click on the link and join that way. So, okay. So good morning. I said, good morning to Connie. Hi, Valerie. And hello, Carol. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. You're fine. Okay, good. Good, good, good. That is just on my end. And that's of course what we're fighting with Comcast over. So yay. <clears throat> It's always something. <laughs> um, I just also wanted to talk about the cards, right? So I did post this, Sharon Rowland, you were the winner. Um, you were the winner of the grapevine cards that we created, right? So I'm gonna pop these in the mail to you. Um, aren't they pretty? I loved those cards. I love that, that whole grouping. So. so these are yours, my friend, congratulations. They'll be coming your direction. And I don't know if I saw Kristen come on or not, but Kristen, you were the winner of the little squirrel and the Santa fun folds that we did on Sunday night. So I will also, I think I need your address though, Kristen. So hi, Karen. So um, if you can send me your address, Kristen, that'll be great. And I will get those off in the mail to you as well. And then of course, one last reminder. Oh, and the other thing about the BOGO sale is it is, seal right it can't be combined with any other offers so if you order from the bogo sale and you haven't ordered from anywhere else it does not qualify you for these just cards there has to be a just cards order of a minimum 25 in product using the october hostess code to in order to qualify for these but these are the october cards and some of you've already earned them thank you so much i really appreciate it i am closing in on my eight hundred thousand dollar um career sales so every order I get gets me a little bit closer to that. And I appreciate that greatly. I think right now I'm about $500 away. So that's exciting. So yeah, so these are the just cards for October. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so we talked about BOGO. We talked about all the winners. I think we're ready to start stamping. How about that? Hi, Betty. Hello, hello. All right, so we are gonna play, <clears throat> excuse me, our feature set today, if you will, or bundle is Love of Leaves. This set is in the annual catalog. There is another leaf set in the mini catalog. And I went back and forth on, did I want this set or did I want the one in the mini catalog? I love these leaves, guys. I love that they're shaded for us already. They're distinctive, right? That's Stampin' Up's word for, um, stamps that are cut to do the shading and all of that all on its own. We don't have to do anything to get that really cool look. So the, that is the stamp set and it has lots of fun greetings in it. Um, I thought of you today, thank you, hello. I'm so glad you're in my life. Your friendship is something I know I can count on and hope changes everything. So really good thinking of you greetings, thank you, all of that, um, which are perfect because I, I use a ton of those types of cards. Thank you, Ashley, page 115 in the annual catalog. And then these are the stamps. Look at this cool one. You know what? It reminds me of a city skyline. And I just thought of that as I looked down at it. And I'm like, now I have to make a card showing this is a city skyline. So watch for that somewhere down the road because I didn't do it for today. But it's all these little dotted lines and you can put it on the side of the card or you can put it at the top of the card. We are gonna use this on one of the projects. And then you have a ton of leaves. Now, you also see leaves in here with the post-it note tape on, right? Already. I did this with the poinsettia set from last year's Christmas catalog as well. Most often when I use these, I want the stitch detail, right? Which is the inside die. And I wanna cut the leaf out. So why not go ahead and just tape them together so I don't have to line them up every single time, right? 
Um, Cause I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm trying to line little things up, especially some of these smaller leaves, oh, my hand does not want to cooperate and put it where I want it. So this is a little tip that post-it note tape here again, another use for it. I just put some, get it lined up the way I want it, put some post-it note tape on it and it holds it in place so that when I pull it out, I can just run it through. I don't have to take time to line it up. That may saves me a bunch of time, especially when I'm doing a lot of a lot of cards, like for a card swap or something. So there are what one, two, three, four, five, six different leaves in the dies, and then this cute little. I'm going to call it the city skyline die now <laughs> because that's what I see. <laughs> Does anybody own level leaves? Because this was a carryover set. It was in the fall cat or the holiday catalog, whatever it was last year, um, last year at the end of the year. And uh, we knew it was carrying over. So I was excited because like I said, I, I waited to see what this year's leaf stamp was. And I really did fall in love with that one. So here's our first card. We actually on this particular case are just gonna use the outline. So I'm gonna have to take my post-it note tape off to position it and uh, I'm using some of the pumpkin pie design six by six designer series paper out of the Regals pack behind that. And I think that's just a really striking card. Those two colors together, um, pumpkin pie and early espresso are fabulous. All right, so pull out some goodies here. Okay. So yes, this is early espresso, as I said. You love that set? Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I'm going to show you a really fun technique with it as well. So here is my piece of crumb cake that we are going to cut out our leaf. So yes, I'm going to take my post-it note tape off and I'll just save that for later. I can put it back together because right now I just want the outline. And of course, each one of the outlines for the leaves is stitched. So I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not, but there's this cool stitching going the whole way around um, the outline of the leaf. So thank you, Emmy. All right, so I'm gonna go over next door here to my die cutting machine. And I am gonna put that down and just run that through real quick. Probably gonna use a piece of post note tape to make sure it doesn't move on me as it goes through. Okay, so that I can keep and use for something else. And now I have my piece for my card. So far so good, no stamping needed. Thank you, yeah, well, you know, I say it all the time, fall's my favorite time of year and I do love these colors as well. Although I will tell you a little secret, it took me forever to pick the colors on this card. I kept trying to add another layer behind the focal layer and I finally gave up and I said, I, I don't think we're gonna do that. So one of these is too long. Which one is it? It is the designer series paper. So let's trim that down. Yeah, I, that's the one thing I talk. We talk a lot about when the time is right, moving away, um, going out west somewhere. Um, and I will miss, I will miss the changing of the leaves. But we have a while and I hope it's a long while before that's an opportunity for us to even think about. All right, so I just want this to be an eighth of an inch longer. So we're gonna cut that at four and five eighths. But I love this paper. I love these um, family colors, right? The regals, the brights, the subtles, the neutrals. And then of course the current in colors and the in colors that will be retiring in May, isn't that sad? Because I love, I love this jade. I love cinnamon cider, misty moonlight, all of those colors. It makes me sad to think that we're gonna be losing them, right? Now I did pop this piece up to give us a little depth. So we're gonna do that. 
actually, we're going to stamp on that first. I've been doing that a lot lately. I've been popping it up and then trying to stamp on it. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to pop this down here in the corner. This little thank you comes right from the Love of Leaves stamp set. Now we'll pop that up. My dimensionals came in, thank goodness. Couldn't believe I ran out of dimensionals. This one's gonna get a lot because I want that depth to stay in place. I don't want it to get smashed down going through the mail. And I feel like I need Probably two there, huh? <laughs> well, not two together. Oh yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> but it's not gonna get smashed down. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons we wanna get away. Because <laughs> even though my husband grew up in New York and had snow, I don't know. I think the older you get, the less you care for snow. And I was never a snow fan, basically because I don't think my mother was a snow fan and she is here listening on, through Zoom. But the thing I remember about snow when I was a kid, if you had plans, they were canceled. <laughs> you didn't go anywhere. That might've had something to do with why I don't like snow. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this on here making sure we just have that little bit of border sticking out. Okay, we're gonna grab the faux suede early espresso ribbon, one of my favorite ribbons. And it really does feel like suede, guys. Drop that just a little bit. There we go, perfect. They say here in Pennsylvania, at least we're gonna have a harder winter than we typically have had. So yay. <laughs> Can't wait for that. She says very sarcastically. All right, we're gonna mount that on there. Slide that under. And tie that off. Just for a little additional interest on that side since we have our greeting on the opposite side. And then, and I'm sorry, because I think these are either back ordered or not available. But you know, I love, love, love these brushed metallic adhesive back dots. I really hope this is something they carry into the annual catalog. I'm worried though, because I think they look at them as fall themed embellishments, but I love them. So I'm gonna use the gold ones. There's gold, copper, and silver on here. And of course I'm loving the gold and copper the most. I haven't used much of the silver. All right, so there's the card front. And then let me show you how those, um, yeah, that is a nice fall card, isn't it? I, I love using my <clears throat> products, my supplies to make fall cards. I have to find the leader stamp because it's in another kit for it. Then for the inside, and you know, I typically leave my insides blank of a verse so that I have space to write, or a lot of times, um, and I'm guessing most of you have received something like this from me, I don't write inside the card. Even if I'm sending it to someone, I'll put a post-it note in there with my greeting so that they can use it and create whatever they want their um, comments to be to the recipient that they may send it to. 
But look how that stamps, isn't that cool? That's the distinctive style stamp. And then that's just gonna go on the inside of our card. And you know, I've said this before too, I don't use vanilla throughout the year very much at all, but in the fall, for some reason, I reach for very vanilla for my neutral. So there we go. That is project number one. It's a very easy, quick fall card. You can make that a birthday card, a thinking of you card, or a thank you card, whatever you like, right? It doesn't have to be a thank you card. All right, so project number one, we're going to move on to project number two, another fall card. This is a great masculine birthday card. Um, and I just used the single, one of the single leaves in there and did it in three different fall colors. And I used the bark embossing folder. And again, I put a blue dot on my um, 3D embossing folders. So that way, that's kind of a trigger, not only for me, if I'm like completely crazed in my studio and I'm trying to figure out why I can't get something to work. Oh yeah, it's got a blue dot on it. It's a 3D embossing folder, but it also helps in my classes. My customers know to look for the 3D dot or the blue dot and that tells them that they need a 3D sandwich. Thank you guys. I'm glad you like it. All right, so, and the happy birthday comes from Artistically Inked. And then the inside I used, let's celebrate you from Celebrate Sunflowers. So those are our products. We're using Mossy Meadow as our card base. Again, very vanilla. So just an eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Here is our embossed piece of cardstock. And you do wanna be careful when you put your cardstock in here, right? You wanna know which way you want your um, design to go. And I can tell you looking at this, I put it in the wrong way. So this time my embossing is going across. This is a very wide tree trunk um, versus straight up and down, right? So we're gonna go with it for sake of time. I've got a piece of the um, Beauty of the Earth designer series paper here. And both sides of that are very fall. Could e you could use either side. I like the more dense color. So we're gonna go with this one. that on there. Then I have a piece of, so the shimmer, the gold shimmer ribbon has been back ordered, not orderable, all those fun things for a while now. And it comes in and it goes out almost immediately. So this is the other gold shimmer ribbon that we have. I think it's very pretty as well. This was part of one of the suites in the prior mini catalog. And I'm just going to trim that down. I see that little vanilla sticking out there. Um, so you can substitute this. If you've been waiting for the gold shimmer and you want to get going on Christmas cards or fall cards, go ahead and get this one because I think it's just as pretty. Um, it has a little bit more texture to it and it is available to order. So we're going to wrap that around there and cover up the edge of our DSP. Turn that off. And this, this gold shimmer is in the annual catalog. And then I did go ahead and I cut these leaves out. So we have Cajun Craze and Cinnamon Cider and Rich Razzleberry. Okay. Um, and you can see, hopefully in the camera, you can see the stitching on here. I'm gonna lay those there. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my happy birthday. This will be fun, because this is tiny stuff to see. Okay. 
tiny stuff to see with blurry eyes. Let's see how we do. I'll take it. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Not too bad. And we're going to mount that on a strip of mossy meadow. Let's go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of our leaves. Make sure I've got the back. If there is, if I have it, if there is a stamp set, bundle, et cetera, guys, that you would like to see me feature in a coffee and cards, let me know. Um, if I have it, I'll be happy to try to work with it and put some ideas together for you. I know, Connie, you asked about the angel stamp set, and I didn't buy that one. So I can't do that one. All right, so we're going to pop these on here. And you could put them all three going up and, you know, straight up and down with the tips at the top, or you could rotate them like I did and put the center one um, opposite direction. I did that for interest, but it doesn't really matter. I could do it just the same like that. We are gonna go this way. And then I used the elegant trim that comes in the gold and the silver. Okay, love that. And of course, I've got the gilded gems here. So apparently I like gold for fall. <laughs> I do, do I? Well, you know, I've done this a time or two. <laughs> I can't believe that it's been over 18 years. I was on a call last night and one of my sidelines, if you will, has retired from stamping up. And I'm like, wonder when I'm gonna get to that point. <laughs> if I'm gonna get to that point. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put these right at the top of the stem. And I'm just taking the bow knot to the glue dot. Okay, and then I'm using my take your pick tool to slide it under the glue dot and position it where I want it on the project. So there we go, got that. We need just a couple more dimensionals for the back of our greeting. And then we're going to go ahead and mount that before we put our uh, bling on. Be careful. I always say this to you, but I always want to remind you when you're adding seal to an embossed piece of cardstock, go with a light hand, right? Don't press down real hard. Um, that really won't help you get the seal moving. Going back over a spot where you may already have seal laid will help to advance it. Or remember I said, keep your silicone pad handy because you can advance it on your silicone pad. 
Um, but if you go with a really heavy hand on an embossed piece of cardstock, you are going to end up tearing it because it's going to grab a hold of that those broken down fibers and uh, it'll tear the cardstock. So, and then it rolls up inside and uh, hi, Nancy, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Thank you, Carol. Let's celebrate you. So again, this is a great masculine birthday card. Women would love it too, but I know we're always looking for masculine projects or cards. And you know me, I got a small strip of DSP left. It's going on the card. So we're just going to put this down here, tie the card front to the inside of the card, and then mount this. Come back and put our bling on. Okay, so we brought that together. I think I go through phases where I decorate the insides and then sometimes I don't, I don't know what that's all about, but, and I decorate my envelopes when I have the time. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but if you were in my studio, <laughs> you would understand why I say that. All right, so there is project number two, another beautiful fall card. Um, that could work for masculine or feminine, right? All right, so I've got one more for you. Give me one second. I wanna clean up these stamps. Get that out of the way. See, I started cheating. I started bringing extra pieces that I'm stamping on just in case. Today, I've done, I'm gonna jinx myself now, but so far the whole dilated blurry vision eyeballs isn't really hurting me. So I don't want you to just think you have to use this stamp set for fall, right? Leaves are around all year round. So let's talk about this one. This one I did in greens. Um, shaded spruce, pear pizzazz, and I think my other color down here is garden green. And I'm gonna show you this technique. This is the baby wipe technique. If you've been around, watched me, attended, in-person events with me over the years. You've probably done this technique with me, but do that on a distinctive stamp and you can see how much more we get that mottled colored effect, right? And then on the inside, I did something a little different only because I was working on basic white and I messed the leaf up when I stamped it. So I just brought the shaded spruce on the inside as well. And that really dresses up the inside of your card too. So that's another option for you. Um, Remember, if you're gonna do that, no, I'm not gonna do it today, I'm not gonna take time, but if you're gonna do that, put a layer behind another layer, cut something out of that cardstock, especially if you're using the specialty papers. Um, it's you know really a waste of a layer of gold foil, for instance, to lay behind and only see an eighth of it. So you can cut a lot of different designs, pieces, sizes, et cetera, out of, a five and three eighths by four and one eighth piece of cardstock that's simply gonna show an eighth of a border, right? Okay, so let's do this one. So this thick, ugh, try that again. Thick basic white is our card base. And as I said, shaded spruce is going on the front and on the inside. And then here is a piece of the whisper white. And here is the piece that we're gonna do the baby wipe technique on. Now, you can see that really cool dye that I said looks like a cityscape. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, I'm glad you like the greens. Yeah, well, you know, we gotta think outside the box and we think leaves, we think fall, but no, you can use leaves all year round. So we're gonna use this cool dye to create that line but doesn't that look like a cityscape? <laughs> and then I'm gonna need my guys here. So I'll put my washi tape back on there because we're gonna cut that pear pizzazz leaf out as well. And I gotta tell you, pear pizzazz is not one of my favorite colors, but I thought it worked really well with the, with the garden green and the, um, uh -huh, shaded spruce. So I'm lining this right up at the edge of the 
uh, Whisper White cardstock. And I'm gonna run that through the die cutting machine. I've kind of got it centered because the cardstock itself is just a little bit bigger than the die. So I'm trying to make sure I'm somewhat centered there. Run that through. And this is a die, you only have to run it forward. You don't have to run it forwards and backwards. Truthfully, with the new die cutting machine, I don't have to do that very often. Only some of the really detailed dies do I do that on. And then it lays right on there. But yeah, I really think that looks like a skyline in a city with all the skyscrapers. I don't know, I'll have to do something very creative with that. All right, so we're gonna lay that one aside and we're gonna bring in our piece of pear pizzazz. And we're going to get these lined up on here. You definitely wanna make sure that you have it lined up. First of all, that it's actually fully on the cardstock. That's very important. But secondly, that it's not overlapping itself anywhere, right? Like the outside edge die isn't overlapping the stitched die on the inside. Because if you do that, you will absolutely damage your dies. So it's another reason I try to get it taped into position because ask me why I know it ruins your dies. <laughs> Which green is that? The one I'm using right now, this is Pear Pizzazz. So Shaded Spruce and Pear Pizzazz are our cardstock colors along of course with basic white. And then in our re-inkers that we're going to use to make the cool bottom portion of the card, we added in some garden green as well. Mm -hmm. So there's our leaf with all its beautiful stitching. And this you could keep and use as a stencil, right? You could do some really cool, um, with the blending brushes, make some really cool solid image leaves. All right, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna lay all this aside for the moment. We're gonna bring in our tools that we need, which is just a pie plate. Um, if you have a cookie sheet you wanna use, you can do that. Um, and just get the aluminum pie plates and I've got baby wipes. Now, the important thing about the baby wipes that you use, you do not want aloe in the baby wipes and you do not want alcohol in the baby wipes. Both of those things will not only potentially impact your stamped image, but it will damage your stamps. So look for that. And I just open them up and I fold them in half and I lay, lay two and I try to make sure my folds are going opposite direction. So I don't necessarily catch an edge. Apparently I have yellow somewhere and where I would have gotten yellow. Did I use yellow? I didn't use any yellow so far today. I don't know. All right. So we've got three colors of reinker, three, four, five um, are your best amounts, best numbers. And you can work darkest to lightest, lightest to darkest. On this particular process, it doesn't really matter. So I think I'm actually starting in the middle. I've got garden green here and I'm just going to squeeze and drop all over and I'm doing it up and you see it's spreading out and that's exactly the effect we want. If you do this, it stays very contained, right? So hold it up and let the ink drop. We're doing this technique in my card clubs this month too on a different type of card. Okay. One more, this is our lightest one. And it's okay if they touch because you're gonna make them touch anyway. All right. And I didn't even count the number of drops. So it's however many you want. Ah, oh, well, there you go.
Yes, a big moon behind the cityscape. Yep. Okay, so we've got that. Now I've got to go back and find our large leaf because I did use a couple of different leaves to do this technique, right? We're going to bring in this piece. I'm going to move all the pertinent pieces out of the way so that I don't end up, you know, throwing ink all over them somehow. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, and I always start with my largest image and work my way around. So see, I'm smashing that so that I am mixing those colors. You can see on the stamp how many different colors I've got, right? That's what you want. And I'm, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna hold it in place for a little bit to allow those inks to move around. Check that out. I love this technique. It is so much fun. And I don't know why I don't do it more often. Um, years and years ago, I had a young lady that was in one of my stamp clubs and she said, I didn't stamp messy enough for her. She likes messy stamping. Well, this is one that I would say is messy because till I'm done here, I'm probably gonna have ink lots of places. All right, so then I'm gonna bring in a couple other, a couple other of the leaf stamps and get a little bit different action. See, that keeps hopping out of there and that's the photopolymer effect. Red rubber doesn't do that. Let's put this one right here. Okay. And then we've got two small ones. See if I can get them both on here. And this can be used over and over and over. Um, like I think we did I don't know, did we do more than one Monday night, Ashley, for you guys? Or did we get away with just the one? Ooh. Okay. Let's bring this guy back in. Let's see if we can just fill in this white space here. Love it. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> shaving, shaving cream technique might be a little bit messy for, uh, for Facebook Live. But those are all fun too. That's why I tell you when you buy an ink pad, get the reanchor because there are so many techniques that you can do with your reanchor. It's not just to reanchor your ink pad, right? Um, plus, our dyes are made with plants. So our dye lots can change just like with yarn. Our dye lots can change because of the weather. If it's drier, the plants are a little bit different than if we have a really wet period of time, right? Okay, I've got jeans on. I'm gonna wipe my hands down on my jeans so that I don't get anything transferred to our projects. I did bring an extra piece just in case. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mount this pair of pizzazz behind that the perfect accent and I'm trying to decide yeah I think I want it to go that way so and this again is another tip you don't need if all we're doing is just this little strip you don't need a whole piece of cardstock right this is probably bigger than I needed but not knowing how my eyes were going to be I wanted to make sure I could hit the target <laughs> all right so now this is going to come over here and go on the base of our, of our die cut piece of white. <laughs> I'm seeing red, you know what that means. I'm gonna run out of seal, see if I can make it through. Go ahead and mount this to our layer of shaded spruce. So what do you guys think about the pear pizzazz with the shaded spruce? Yay or nay? Greens are not my favorite color, I have to tell you. I sometimes struggle working with them. I, I like them by themselves. Some of them. I love shaded spruce. I'm not a fan of pear pizzazz. I'm not a fan of old olive. I'm not a fan of garden green. 
Um, and if you are, that's great. Cause you know, we all are attracted to different colors, but they, they challenge me. Oh, good. You like it. Okay, good. Yay. Yeah. And I, you know what? I forget. I have laid some things here now beside me that I can wipe my hands on, but I've been wiping my hands on my jeans or my um, aprons, stamping up aprons for so many years that I forget to grab them. <laughs> That's I, I always joke. That's why they gave us black aprons. So we could, um, we could wipe our hands on them. Right. And then I use the essentials Baker's twine pack. Um, has the five different colors in it, the black, the crumb cake, the white, which you can see I'm almost through, the very vanilla and Sahara sand. And I made a crumb cake bow that we're gonna put on there with the glue dot. I don't know why I put things back. At least when I put them back, I know where to find them. <laughs> that was something I had to implement in one of my last corporate positions, we did a lot of um, process improvement and 5S and all that stuff. It was a manufacturing environment. And in addition to customer service, I had small equipment repair that I was responsible for. And oh my goodness, the guy's desks were whew, a mess. We had to 5S. <laughs> and I left a little bit extra long tails on there because I wanted some interest dropping down into the baby wipe area. And then we're gonna start with our greetings. Happy birthday comes from many messages. This is the one that I cut up. And I brought two of those little pieces along just in case, right? Oh boy. <laughs> this one might get me. Hmm, let's do this. White on white. I have a hard time seeing that on a good day, let alone a day where. Oh, no. <laughs> Try that again. Yeah, I didn't think about. I was happy I didn't need an injection, but I didn't think about the dilation of my eyes and coming right back and doing this. Well, that's okay, we'll take that one. Oh, is it one of your favorite colors? You know what, it used, I, I didn't used to mind it. They changed it, I swear to you. I, I, it's much brighter than it used to be. And I just, I don't know. I tried to use it the other day on a project and I'm like, it might've been this one. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Or it might have been the first one, trying to put it with the pumpkin pie, because I thought that would work, but I didn't like it. Sorry. But I love that you love it. I love it because you know what? I don't dislike cards that I see made with it. It's just not one that I actually gravitate to. And if I missed your comment, guys, I'll go back and respond. I'm ha I am having a hard time seeing the comments today. We're gonna drop that down here just a little bit. Put that right there. I was gonna put it down here, but I want you to be able to see all that really cool, beautiful baby wipe work, right? Let's put the inside together. So the inside, as a reminder, looks like that. I'm gonna grab back the baby wipes and one of the leaf stamps. Hmm. Let's do this one. Eh, you know what? Let's do one of the smaller ones because then I think the whole leaf will fit in there and you might understand what that is rather than just some blob of color down there, right? Let's do it this way. Oh yeah. And see, that is not a mistake. That is the die, that is, or the die. That is the way the stamp is cut with the distinctive stamping. So don't think that you messed up. And then I'm using the birthday greeting. Yep. Simply elegant, that's not it, but it's from that suite. Elegantly said, maybe. Just went right out of my head. And I use shaded spruce for the, for the greetings, both inside and out.
Don't forget to like, comment, share, and love the video to be entered into the drawing to win these cards. I do that drawing right before I go live so that even if you're watching the replay, you can still participate. Oh boy. Mm. I ran out. <laughs> You know what? I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to grab my seal plus and put that last little strip in there. There we go. I almost made it through. All right. And there is project number three. What do you elegantly said? Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> What do you think guys? Those, let's get this out of the way because that's just not pretty behind there. And then you can see my foam pad that my girlfriend gave us at a event. There are our three cards. Two fall and one spring because leaves are not just for fall. All right, I hope you like those guys. Again, if you did like, love, comment, share the video for me and uh, Make sure you're hopping over to YouTube as well and subscribing over there. Just a reminder, right? There will be more information in your inbox about the first ever virtual BOGO sale coming up on October 24th or 22nd. It'll run the 22nd through the 24th. And uh, there'll be more information in your inbox over the weekend if you are subscribed to my email. I will drop the link in the description above this video as well for that as well as the group to join on Facebook to be part of the sale and send me your questions. Send me your questions via email um, so that I can collect them because I will be going live on Thursday night at 7.30, next Thursday, not tonight, next Thursday at 7.30 to do a Q&A session and just review the rules one last time. Um, as you can imagine, this is going to be pretty big. I'm hopeful. <laughs> and I got to have some rules in place to keep it fair for everyone and just to keep my sanity, basically. So I look forward to seeing you Sunday night at eight for Come Stamp Along with me. And until then, have a fabulous weekend. Thanks so much for watching and for your support. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.